Welcome to GovCast. I am your host, Managing Editor Amy Kluber. IT modernization at federal agencies will always be among the top priorities, and necessary will be a holistic understanding of software systems, or software intelligence. CAST is one digital leader in this space that is proving how its tools can help agencies in their modernization journey. We spoke with Greg Rivera, Vice President of CAST Highlight, to talk about how these products can assist agencies in their modernization initiatives. This episode is sponsored by CAST. Welcome to GovCast, Greg. It's nice to have you. Thanks for having us, Amy. Appreciate it. So what is software intelligence? As we all know, basically software runs the world today. And and that's not a majorly earth shattering statement or anything like that. But the challenge is it's become so pervasive and complex for a lot of government organizations in particular, it's become a bit of a black box. You know, a lot of these software systems have been built over years and years, and the original developers aren't even around anymore. So what software intelligence is, is it's a way to gain insight into these complex software systems, and specifically into the structural condition of software by analyzing the source code of these applications. And these insights include things like the health, the size, reliability, security, composition, or now more recently, the cloud readiness of software systems. An easy way to think about it is software intelligence is like having an MRI machine for your software. And that's essentially what CAST provides. Tell us more about CAST and your role there. Sure. So CAST is a software company. We are the pioneer and leader in this category called software intelligence. And we've developed Uh, the most advanced MRI for software. It's the result of a couple hundred million dollars in research and development. And in the public sector, it's essentially helping organizations achieve faster modernization. For example, if they're looking to migrate applications to the cloud, gain greater objectivity if they're just looking to get a sense of the health of their software, or achieve higher quality, for example, if they're trying to manage vendors who are delivering software to them. So we're working with public sector agencies at both the federal and state and local government level. We're also pretty deep in financial services and manufacturing and technology. Basically, anyone that is highly dependent on custom developed software and they're looking to modernize, that's really the space we play in. And we're a global company with operations uh, in offices in North America, Europe, India, and China. And my specific role is I manage one of the products for the company, which is called Cast Highlight. What are some of the key challenges agencies are facing when they are trying to modernize? Yeah, that's a really good question, Amy. So there's probably three things that uh, we see on a regular basis with government agencies when they're trying to modernize. The first one is just lack of visibility across large portfolios of applications. A lot of these organizations have developed dozens or hundreds or in some cases, thousands of applications in their portfolio. And it's very hard for them to just get visibility and start rationalizing their applications as they plan modernization. You know, where do they start? How do they prioritize? How do they identify opportunities to consolidate or retire if there's redundancies across their portfolio? So that's the first big challenge, just, you know, the lack of visibility on these very complex portfolios. The second one is just a challenge in understanding exactly what needs to be addressed within the code of a software application if they're looking to transform or modernize. These are very complex systems, as I mentioned before, and it's very hard to understand exactly how to modernize complex software systems. So that's kind of the second area that's challenging. And then the third one is if they are able to get a handle on their big portfolio of applications, and they are able to understand what they need to do and develop a plan, is ensuring that they're executing that plan as safely as possible. You know, they've probably developed some kind of architectural plan or or desired end state, but these are complex systems and they're worked on by multiple teams, lots of developers, and it could be very difficult to ensure that that journey is staying on track or adhering to the principles, the design principles they put in place. So those I would say are kind of the three big challenges, lack of visibility, understanding complex software systems and what their condition and structure is, and then just ensuring that that journey is proceeding as safely as possible. With those challenges in mind, how is CAST enabling government agencies to accomplish those goals? Sure. So as I mentioned before, CAST is a software company, and we have three software products that are helping government agencies in this journey. The first one, which is the the product that I manage for the company, is called CAST Highlight. 
And it's a SaaS product that is designed to rapidly assess a large portfolios of applications. So we could assess hundreds of applications in a couple of days and develop an objective roadmap to modernize applications and start migrating to the cloud. And that's based, again, on analyzing the actual source code of applications. So uh, it's not purely based on subjective things. It's based on very objective data. Now, we do have some surveys built into the product as well to capture some qualitative information. But most of the data we provide comes from analyzing source code. And that helps agencies start to figure out where do they start? What are some quick wins that they might be able to pick off and migrate much sooner? How do they segment and prioritize all their applications and identify those opportunities to potentially consolidate or retire applications? The next thing that Highlight will do is drill into individual applications and give some more detailed information that's very useful during modernization. So are there blockers in the application source code that need to be remediated before migrating to the cloud, for example? Like a very common thing we'll see for an on-prem application running in a data center is that it's using something like persistent files. That's not something that's going to work if you're going to try and move this application to a cloud native state. So we'll identify those blockers very early on in the process so they could be remediated and the process could happen much quicker. Or the other thing that we see out there is how these cloud platforms like Amazon and AWS, they have catalogs now of dozens and dozens of cloud services that could be adopted and it could be quite overwhelming. So the other thing Cast Highlight does is recommend the specific services that could be leveraged on those platforms. So if we see a blocker like persistent files being used, Cast Highlight might recommend a specific data service uh, or storage service on one of those platforms. So that's one product we have. Uh, The second one we have is called Cast Imaging, which essentially is like literally like that MRI machine I mentioned earlier. It automatically generates architectural blueprints of complex software systems. So if you're looking to modernize a complex software system, Cast Imaging will help essentially reverse engineer the entire architecture of a complex system from the presentation layer all the way down to the code layer and everything in between, identify all those interdependencies so that discovery is much quicker and organizations can determine how to take monolithic systems, start to break them apart and leverage things like microservices and modernize in various different ways. And then our third product is called Cast AIP or Application Intelligence Platform. That does deep dive analysis on application systems to identify the health, you know, architecture, guidelines, things of that nature. So as you're going through the modernization journey, CAST AIP is often used to ensure that the journey is being done safely. It's adhering to the architectural plan and there aren't new flaws or issues being introduced into the software during that journey. So those those are kind of the three products we have and how they're used in that modernization process. IT modernization is always going to be a priority. Can you give an example of an agency that is having success with software intelligence? Sure, that's a good question. Uh, I can give you a couple of real quick ones. The first one is the Department of Defense, the U.S. Air Force. We've been working with them for a while. And in particular, a little bit over a year ago, we started working with their system integrator and they acquired our Cast Highlight product for a program they had at the time, which was called Cloud Computing Environment or CCE. It's now since been renamed to Cloud One, but basically Cloud One is a U.S. Air Force program that enables departments to migrate their applications from their on-prem data centers up to the cloud. And Cast Highlight was brought in to help speed up that migration process because it helps assess the readiness of applications and identify some of those things I was mentioning earlier. So it's been used last year in 2019 to help migrate dozens of Air Force applications up to the cloud. And the feedback we got is that using our Cast Highlight platform reduced the assessment time in half. So if you think of a very complex software system, that would take maybe four weeks to manually review and assess. With Cast Highlight, that was brought down to about two weeks. And that's an extreme example. There's other examples of smaller applications that are much quicker. But that was a really good example. And we're now working with... Um, the Air Force this year and their new system integrator to scale up this process. And they have a target of getting hundreds of applications up to the cloud and leveraging Cast Highlight to do that assessment in 2020. So that's a really good example at the defense level. And then one other quick one is in the civilian side, we're working with the U.S. General Services Administration uh, in a different scenario. They have a lot of vendors developing software for them. Uh, And as they're going through their modernization journey, they want to get better visibility into the software being delivered by their vendors. And in particular, 
their vendors are using a lot of open source components in their software development practices. This is very common. It speeds up the development process. But it also introduces some potential risks, you know, things like security vulnerabilities, potential IP licensing implications if you're using open source software in your custom software development. So they're also using CAST to analyze all of the software being delivered by vendors to identify any potential risks and essentially get a bill of materials of all the different components being used so that they can ensure the equality is being maintained and they're not introducing security or potential licensing risks into their software as they modernize. So just a couple quick examples at the defense level, but also at the civilian level. And what is the importance of industry partnerships here? You know, it's a really good question, Amy, because the channel business makes up a very significant percentage of CAT's overall business, and it's growing pretty rapidly. As I mentioned before, we're a product company. We're not a services company. So we're highly dependent on partners to deliver the services around the products that we bring to market. And we also don't provide the actual modernization services to take a piece of software and actually modernize it. We provide a piece of technology that's an enabler, a facilitator. So we're very dependent on working in particular with different types of services companies to bring software intelligence to the market. So examples are like we work with all the global systems integrators like Accenture, IBM, Cognizant, CGI, DXC, to name a few. Right, And there's obvious applications for those partners when they're using software intelligence to help customers modernize. Another area is the advisory firms. Companies like BCG, Bain, EY, we work with them because they're often using CAS to do assessments for customers and provide advisory services. And then there's the technology partners, especially the big cloud platforms like Microsoft and Amazon. Obviously, they see our technology as an enabler to help their customers more quickly get their applications and workloads up to their cloud platforms. And in the federal uh, SI space, we're also working with a lot of the services partners, you know, companies like Lidos or SAIC, to name a few. So, I mean, honestly, partnerships are super critical to CAST to scale software intelligence across both the public and the private sector as well. Pivoting to you, what brought you to this field? Were you always interested in technology? That's an easy answer. Yes. I've been involved in technology my whole career. When I was younger, I, you know, I got an undergraduate degree in electrical engineering. I went in and got a master's degree in engineering. And Amy, although I haven't written a line of code in over 20 years, I've always been pretty close to technology and especially software. Uh, so I've worked for a number of different technology startups in my career. It's something I've always been passionate about. I've also worked for larger tech companies like Microsoft or IDG, Arrow Electronics. And now I'm with Cast. And got to be honest with you, managing a product for a company is, is pretty awesome. I mean, it's super challenging, but also super exciting because in addition to seeing the direct influence I have on our product strategy, I'm also seeing the impact that executing that strategy is actually having on the cast business. You know, I could see that direct impact and that's extremely fulfilling. And the thing is, is we're in a space that's that's pretty exciting right now. You know, we're truly making a difference in helping government agencies in a very relevant area. And that's modernization. That's not going anywhere. Digital transformation and modernization is not only something that's super important now, it's not going to stop. You know, this is just going to be something that happens for forever, quite frankly. So we're in a, you know, pretty exciting space and you couldn't be, you couldn't ask to be in a better place from a uh, technology perspective right now, if that's something you're passionate about. And I, and I truly am. Great point. Given that, who needs this solution? Is it all of government? Well, that's a pretty straightforward one. As I mentioned earlier, software intelligence is basically critical for any entity, public or private, that's highly dependent on custom developed software. And the specific audience and folks that are getting the most value and often our, our primary users are going to be CIOs, CTOs, chief enterprise architects, cloud architects, the heads of like the cloud centers of excellence at agencies, and in some cases, the heads of application development. And obviously also the SIs and partners that support all of these individuals as well are, are going to be a key audience for software intelligence. Is there anything in government you're most excited about as far as these IT priorities or maybe some other ones? That's a really good question. And I think what we're seeing right now is a trend to just get better visibility into the software estates 
that government agencies have. I've talked about the challenges around lack of visibility, but also starting to rationalize big application portfolios. So that's kind of the first step that we're seeing now is just particularly the larger government agencies trying to just understand what they have. But where it gets really exciting is how they are now taking to the next step and truly starting to transform and leveraging all these different technologies, whether it's just breaking apart a big monolith that might have a combination of mainframe technology and distributed more modern technologies and starting to leverage things like microservices to become more nimble, more agile in serving their constituents or the adoption of, of cloud technologies. I mean, there's a big promise in the power of cloud in addition to the initial idea of maybe cutting costs, but also starting to leverage some of these more cloud native services, you know, things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, and a number of those other incredible technologies, because that's going to start to enable government entities to be that much more responsive and innovative in delivering services to all of us, their constituents. And that's a pretty exciting thing to see, because government typically, as we all know, doesn't have the reputation for being overly innovative when it comes to technology. But we're seeing that change quite dramatically especially as they start to adopt some of these modern technologies like cloud platforms. So that part I would say is, is pretty exciting to witness and it's actually happening a lot faster than we thought a couple of years ago. Well, certainly a lot to look forward to. I'm sure we can go on and on about software intelligence and all the opportunities here. This was a great overview of what CAS does and how its products solve some of these important challenges in government. So thanks so much for joining us, Greg. Well, thank you, Amy, for having me and for uh, letting us share a little bit about software intelligence. GovCast is a production of Government CIO Media and Research. For more podcasts, head to governmentcio.com slash podcasts. If you liked what you hear, let us know by leaving us a review in iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. GovCast is produced by Amy Kluber. Theme music provided by Big Hoax. If you're interested in sponsoring a podcast, contact us at sponsor at governmentcio.com. Sponsor at